Hey guys, it's Steve Frayne. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Oracle's SQL Loader utility to load data into the database. SQL Loader is a command line tool that is uh, typically used for bulk data loads. As you can see in the diagram in front of you, there are a couple files associated with the use of SQL Loader. There's an input data file. Typically, that's a sort of flat text data file. Um, you can think of what a lot of people create are called comma-separated data files. And I'll show you an example of one in a second, but it's basically each row of the file corresponds to a row of the table you're trying to load. There are commas in between what will become comma, uh, excuse me, the column values in there. And it's the sort of file that is exported by many different databases or data sources. Uh, you can save that kind of file natively from Excel. Again, I'll show you an example in a second, but it's a very common format in which to save data from a database or other data source. So you have your input file and you also have a control file. A control file is a file that basically contains a set of instructions for SQL Loader that tells it where the input file is, take the data out of the input file, and how to handle the fields in the input file and where to put them. And as the diagram obviously depicts, we are intent mainly on sticking that data into Oracle database tables. Um, and we have the option to create other files, such as a log file that talks about the operations SQL Loader went through, a so-called banned file for any records that SQL Loader is unable to load, and then a discard file, we can tell SQL Loader explicitly not to load certain records. And it's not that they're formatted incorrectly or something like that. We can just tell SQL Loader, hey, for all the records you're going to read through, even if you could insert these into the database, don't insert these particular ones because they don't meet certain logical criteria. So we'll walk through an example that kind of weaves all of these things together. What I'm going to do in the beginning of the demo is I'm going to create a file of data that we can load into the database. Uh, I'm going to call this particular file cwhatever.txt, but I'm basically going to select the object name and the object type from the all objects table, uh, put a comma in between those two values, and then throw that into a flat text file. I'm going to create this export from SQL Loader. So in the beginning, I want to issue a couple of commands that are going to control how SQL Loader operates, or excuse me, or how SQL Plus operates. So I'm going to spool a certain file. And as you may recall, in SQL Plus, spool says create a certain file with the output I'm about to show you. Okay. If I look here in the file system, uh, there's a file called whatever.txt that has just started, but it has nothing in it. That's because I just started spooling. So I'm going to select object name, concatenate that together with a comma and then the value of object type from the all objects table. And this is just to give us some uniform data to start playing around with. Okay. Then I go and spool off. I'm closing the file, see whatever.txt, and I don't want SQL Plus to write to it anymore. Done. So let's go look at see whatever.txt. All right, we can see it's got 972 KB in it. Fire this guy up. And SQL, uh, when you're spooling, you're going to get some of this control information at the very beginning, the query you ran, and also at the very end. You'll see that I have 12,130 rows, etc. but I have basically one row for every object. Object name, object type. This is what a typical flat file that one might load into a database looks like, and I'm gonna be able to use this to uh, populate this data into an Oracle database using SQL order. Obviously, I took it out of one particular table or one view, the all objects view, but I'm gonna go now use it, SQL order, to put it back in another. All right, so we have this cwhatever.txt file ready. Save that to make sure it stays this way. And leave that be. So now my file's been prepared. I'm going to create a table I'm going to call loaded. And here you can see I'm just stealing the structure from the all objects table. I'm using this where one equals zero logic to create a table that has the following structure but no data in it. Again, where one equals zero will never match anything. So that will cause a table with columns that match object name and object type from the all objects view to be created, but no data be stuffed in that view. Uh, I think I already have a table loaded, so I'm just going to drop it quickly. You, you guys probably will not. Table's gone. Okay. Going to recreate that table. Table's created. 
Describe the table loaded. There you go. I have an object name and object type. Now I'm going to work on creating my control file. I'm going to use a file called cwhatever.ctl and I'm going to start with this and we'll talk through what these mean in a second. So my file started. I'll paste that guy in there. So the control file is pretty simple. It says I'm going to load data, as you might expect, in a certain file. We, are, we just created that file. That was that comma-separated file we called cwhatever.txt. Note I have single quotes around it into a certain table. And here I name the table. I'm going to put it into the loaded table. If you recall, the loaded table was the table we just created a moment ago, creating the loaded table. It's saying the fields are terminated by commas. So I know that in cwhatever.txt, I had commas in between the column values. I could have used pipes. I could have used any number of other things. I happen to use commas for this file, so I'm telling SQL loaded that the field terminator is the comma. And I'm telling it, in the loaded table, this is positionally how you should match things. The first uh, comma-separated value that you come across in cwhatever.txt, stuff that into the object name field of the loaded table. The second comma-separated value that you encounter in cwhatever.txt, stuff that into the object type field of the loaded table. And it's pretty simple and straightforward. Okay, So I'm going to save my control file there, cwhatever.ctl, and I'm going to go run the command. SQL loader again is a command line utility. I'm going to take this, if I can ever copy it effectively, and I'm going to run it from the command line. So SQL LDR is the name of the utility. I give it a couple of arguments. I tell it the control, look at this control file, and I want to create a log file, see whatever.log. I'm saying record your record of your operations in this log file. Any error messages or anything interesting would go there. You'll notice that I'm not specifying a data file there because that data file is recorded in the, um, the control file itself. Back to SQL loader. So SQL loader is prompting me for my username. It's basically trying to log into the database for me. I'm going to log into the system. Password. And it's starting to go. Hmm. SQL Loader defaults to trying to load and commit 64 records at a time. And I know that from what I had there in that, that whatever.txt file, that I had like 12,130 records or whatever it was. So something doesn't seem right. This logical record count of 64 means it's only processed about 64 or so records. Um, doesn't look like it made its way through the whole file. So something seems to be wrong. How do I investigate that? Well, I told it, log your operations to see whatever.log. Let's see what's in there. So I have a whatever.log file. Open this guy up. Let's see, I'll read through here some header information. It's telling me information about the run, where it's going to keep things. Uh, and what do I see? Well, I see a bunch of errors down here. I have an error on my table in the object type column. The value I'm trying to put in there is too large for the column. Well, that's weird. I just took it out of the those values out of the all objects view, and I'm trying to stick it back into something that was a structural match for the all objects view. So I don't know why that would be the case. It's interesting here. I can see the actual length of the values that it's trying to stick in are like 74, 72, 75, when I know that the column itself was actually only 19 characters long. But again, since I took this all out of the all objects view, it's kind of weird that the values would be longer um, when I'm trying to stuff them back in. I should look at the data file and see if there's something to miss here. I wonder if I did something wrong. And here's my problem. When I spool a file from SQL loader as I did, all this white space on the end comes along for the ride. Oracle is trying to load this information from the data file in there. Um, it's basically, it sees comma separated values, but we obviously visually see this. Because all these white spaces are in there, these spaces, Oracle's trying to load a value this wide into a column that's only 19 characters wide. That's not good. Just an artifact of how we did the spool from, from SQL Plus. We have to figure out how to deal with that. What do we do? Well, it turns out that Oracle is going to give us facilities and syntax in the control file we can use to manipulate or munge the data a little bit uh, to, so that we can sort of trim off that extra white space and get it back down to the kind of size that will actually fit in the object type column. 
So why don't we go and look at how we would do that. Here is a somewhat more complex control file. I'm going to replace the contents of whatever.ctl with this, and then we'll see how we do. So here we are with whatever.ctl. I'll put this information there. Okay, so you can see it's pretty similar. I'm loading data from a certain file, whatever.txt. This time I'm creating a discard file. Remember, discard is things I'm intentionally throwing away. It's not bad records, records that Oracle can't load. Actually, while we're talking about that, let me show you this. This bad file was created from the last run. Let's look at its contents. So these are the records Oracle tried to load initially before it reached kind of its error threshold count and things that it couldn't load because of errors it throws into the .bad file and you can see probably somewhere in here it mentions that yeah, errors allowed 50. So it's only going to try to do a certain number of errors before it bombs out. Um, you know, if there's a problem where you see here maximum error count exceeded. So if there's a problem, SQL Loader won't try to load a, a badly formatted file forever. It kind of will just stop after a certain point. So where were we here? We're back to the control files where we wanted to be. So a discard file, uh, in contrast to the bad file, is records that I'm going to intentionally tell SQL Loader to skip over. I'm putting it again in the table loaded. This command tells me I want to truncate the table before I start loading. When we truncate a table, we basically remove all the records. Here's a logical condition I'm specifying. When the value of object type does not equal index. So if you guys remember from that original whatever.txt data set, uh, some of the object types were table, etc., and a number of them were index. So what I'm telling SQL Loader to do is, even if you can load records that have an object type of index, just don't drop them, and we're going to throw them in the so-called discard file, whatever.dis. We're keeping them there. I've decided for whatever reason that I don't want to load index records into this loaded table. You know, we could specify any number of other logical criteria here. This one's just for an example. Again, fields terminated by comma. That means I have commas in between my column values. I'm going to load in the object name and object type again, just as before, but I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to use a trim command to take the white space off of that object type. So if you remember, we only can accept 19 characters in that particular column, uh, but th there were a lot more white space came along for the ride as a function of how we created that spool file in SQL Loader. So I'm going to trim that guy and get rid of the white space. I'm just going to run this. We'll save this guy. Then we're going to go back and quickly verify that we've got Nothing in the loaded table. Nothing in there because our, our load failed last time. So we've done our new and improved load with a new and improved control file. Try this guy. They ask me to log in again. Okay. Oh, now something's happening. Yeah, we can see that it already got up to 12,130 records which is a good sign so far. Why don't we look at our new log file and see what happened. Okay, so you can see it's got a, a list of uh, records that it discarded, it threw in a discard file because it failed the when clause, which is to say it had the value of index and object type. You can see interesting information like that in the rug. You, excuse me, the log, you can see the number of total records read at 12,130. There were 1,415 that we tossed out because you know, they failed the when clause. They had index in their object type. And hopefully our trim method worked. So 10,715 rows are selected. What did it say in our log file? It said that we put in 10,715 rows successfully loaded. Okay, so SQL Loader has worked. Uh, we were able to load all the records from that file we created, or at least the ones we wanted to. We discarded certain rows just because we decided our business rule was that we didn't want them in there, and we didn't have any errors. The trim function was able to resolve those issues we saw last time. All right, there's plenty of things you can do with SQL Loader. It's a very versatile tool, but that's a, a quick tour of the most important functions. Thanks for your time, guys.